Good morning to all and welcome to the session. This session is all about error location tips. In this session, I'm going to give 20 time saving strategies or 20 time saving tips. You may wonder why should we learn time saving strategies or why should we learn time saving tips? You all know you have to answer 30 questions in 20 minutes and that is a stipulated time period. And while taking the exam, every second matters. If you can save using these strategies a few seconds, that gives you the competitive edge. You should always remember any competitive exam for that matter where there is stipulated time period. It is not what you know that matters, but how fast you can choose the correct option that matters. This you should always remember. Imagine you know the answer and you have taken 30 seconds, one scenario. Another scenario, you know the answer, you have taken only 10 seconds. That means you have saved 20 seconds. And in the exam, I would like to reiterate, every second matters, every minute matters, and every mark matters. And this you should always remember. Keeping that in mind, I have brought 20 time-saving strategies or tips. Let us start with the first one. What is strategy one? If you see a time phrase, think of appropriate tense. I'm sure you guys have learned the tenses already. Exam is fast approaching. They should be at your fingertips. You also know every tense takes a specific time phrase. I always tell my students, when you read a sentence, look for the time phrase intentionally, deliberately. Why? When you see the time phrase, you get an idea what the sent whether the sentence has to be in present tense or past tense or future tense. When you see the examples, you understand. She is a student, but did not go to school every day. Here, what is the time phrase every day? Every day, the time phrase every day goes with present tense. In this sentence, we have two clauses. She is a student, it is in present, so no problem, no error, but did not go to school every day. Here, there's a problem. There's a problem in the second clause. What is the second clause? But did not go to school every day did not go to school. This is past tense. Every day we cannot use past tense. We have to use present tense. Here it is in negative form. Based on that, did is not correct. It has to be does. So what is a correct sentence? She is a student, but does not go to school every day. The sentence is correct. And here, don't touch the time phrase. Based on the time phrase, you decide or spot the error. Look at the second example. I have met my childhood friend yesterday. What is the time phrase over here? Yesterday. Yesterday goes with past tense. But here the sentence is in present perfect. That means it is not correct. Here, I met my childhood friend yesterday. Then the sentence is right. I have met present perfect. There is a wrong combination. It has been given in many competitive exams because it goes with common errors. What is a common error? We cannot use present perfect with specific time that goes into past. So here, I met my childhood friend yesterday. How do you spot the error based on the time phrase? Look at the third example. She is writing a letter for the last two hours. There are time phrases like for the past two hours, for the last two hours, for the past two months. And these time phrases go with present perfect continuous tense. But here, she is writing a letter. It is in present continuous, not correct. We have to use present perfect continuous tense. Then, she has been writing. She has been writing a letter for the last two hours. Then the sentence is correct. Let us have a look at more examples, how the time phrases are important when it comes to deciding or spotting the error. He will reach Bombay by this time tomorrow. Here we have the preposition by and the time that goes into future. By plus time that goes into future, we have to use future perfect tense. But here it is in future tense, not correct. He will reach, not correct. We have to use future perfect tense. Based on that, he will have, not has, he will have reached Bombay by this time tomorrow. And if you ask which tense is this, 
future perfect tense. He reads a book at the moment. What is the time phrase over here at the moment? This time phrase goes with present continuous tense. But here it is in present tense, not correct. He is reading. He is reading a book at the moment. He is writing at the moment, right now. She was teaching for two hours at this time yesterday. At this time yesterday goes with past continuous, uh, also past tense, past perfect continuous. Usually goes with past continuous and past perfect continuous. Here it is in past continuous, but there is the time period for two hours. This is an important question. If you see the time period, you have to tell yourself, you cannot use past continuous. You have to use past perfect continuous. Based on that, she was teaching not correct. She had been teaching. She had been teaching for two hours at this time yesterday. This is past perfect continuous tense. Now let us go to strategy two or the second strategy. Sometimes you come across sentences without a time phrase. Then what are you supposed to do? If there is no time phrase, think of past continuous tense and past perfect tense. These two tenses are combinational tenses. They don't take the time phrases. So when you don't see the time phrase in the sentence, you have to recollect past continuous tense and also past perfect tense. Look at the first example. They started the program before the chief guest arrived. Do you see the time phrase here? No, there's no time phrase. And there are two clauses. They started the program before the chief guest arrived. And we have the clue here before. When you come across words like before, after, by the time, when, and uh, used to join two clauses, you have to think of, and there's no time phrase, you have to think of past perfect tense. What is the use of past perfect tense? We use past perfect tense. Imagine two actions happened in the past, one after the other. For the first action, we use past perfect. For the second action, we use past tense. Here, what is the first action? They started the program. It should be in past perfect. And the second action, the chief guest arrived. That should be in past. No problem here. The chief guest arrived. But the first action should be in past perfect. Here it is in past, not correct. How do we correct? They had started the program, past perfect tense. Here, what is a combination? Past perfect tense plus past tense. Two actions that happened in the past, one after the other. First action, past perfect. Second action, past tense. She is decorating the house when I went home. Even here, you see two actions. One, she is decorating the house. The other, when I went home. But it's a different context. What is this context? Something was going on when something else happened in the past. For something happened in the past, we use past tense. I went home, no error. But that time, something was going on. For that, we should use past continuous tense. Here, she is decorating. Present continuous, not correct. We have to say, she was decorating the house when I went home. For the same idea, you can also say, when I went home, when I went home, something happened. What happened? I went home. That time, something was going on. What was going on? She was decorating the house. Here, it is a combination of past continuous plus past tense. Even here, you don't see the time phrase. Third example. She is studying while I was reading a book. Here, there's no time phrase. And two actions, you should understand the context. Two actions going on at the same time in the past. For, for both the actions, we use past continuous tense. Here, I was reading, no problem. Here, we cannot say is. We have to say was. Two actions were going on at the same time in the past. For both the actions, we have to use past continuous tense. And what is the combination here? Past continuous tense plus past continuous tense. 
And this is again very important. If there is a time freeze, within no time you will be able to spot the error. If there is no time freeze, then quickly you have to recollect these two tenses and check. Strategy number three. If there is no time freeze, think of the context. Sometimes what happens, you may try with uh, past tense, a uh, past perfect tense, past tense, past continuous tense, past tense. But some, every time it may not work, you have to look at the context. Based on the context, you have to decide where the error is. When you see the example, you understand what exactly I'm trying to say. Contextual awareness. A lot of problems crop up while he was studying, but he could solve only a few of them. Here it's a lengthy sentence. A lot of problems crop up, one clause, while he was studying, second clause, but he could solve only a few of them, third clause. Here we have three clauses, and two clauses are in past. He was studying, he could solve. Based on that, you should understand the context goes into the past. And the first clause, it is not in past. It is in present. It has to be in past based on the context. So where is the error? A lot of problems crop up, not correct, cropped up. It should be in past. All the three clauses should be in past because the context goes into the past. And these questions, if you look at the questions, error location, 80% in the past based on rules and 20% based on contextual awareness. Now the ratio has changed. Perhaps 60% based on rules, easy to answer. And 40%, sometimes more than 40%, based on contextual awareness. Then students ask, so how to get this contextual awareness? Only one way you can get, you have to read the newspaper every day. Then you get exposed to a variety of contexts and that will develop, that way you can develop contextual awareness. Without reading, it is not possible. Question, example number two. Many people think it was not a good idea to go against traditions. Here there's no time freeze, but uh, context, you should ask yourself, what does it talk about? It talks about a fact. Many people think it was not a good idea to go against traditions. So it is more or less a fact, an opinion. For that, we have to use present tense, but here it is in past, so it is not correct. We have to say, many people think it is not a good idea to go against traditions. This is what precisely I call contextual awareness. And in my opinion, it is easy to answer questions based on rules, but very difficult to answer questions based on questions based on contextual awareness. That too under pressure, not at all easy. Strategy number four. If you see the question tag, think of appropriate helping verb. How do we form question tags? We have to use appropriate helping verb and we have to repeat the subject. Usually, always, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> always a pronoun. She comes here often, didn't she? Here, first you have to know the tense. She comes here often. She comes here often, which tense is that? Present tense. And what is a helping verb that goes with present tense? If the subject is third person singular, we use does. But here, what is a helping verb did? Not correct. Based on that, what is a correct sentence? She comes here often, doesn't she? does not. How do we form the question tag? We use the appropriate helping verb. If the sentence is in affirmative form, we have to use the word not. Helping verb plus not short form, we have to use and repeat the subject and always pronoun. She comes here often, doesn't she? Look at the second example. He has assigned the work to employees. Here, what is a helping verb has? We have to repeat the helping verb, use the appropriate helping verb. Based on that, we cannot say haven't, we have to say hasn't he. 
very simple you can save a few seconds the moment you focus on the helping verb strategy five if you see the word if this is very important you can save a few seconds if you see the word if think of conditionals conditional sentences in english we have broadly three types of conditionals but total four open condi present conditionals two types open conditional hypothetical conditional past conditional zero conditional the moment you see if think of conditionals if you went to delhi you will meet the minister here when it comes to again open conditional hypothetical conditional don't touch the main clause based on the main clause you decide where the error is you will meet the minister this is in future tense that means it is open conditional in open conditional main clause we use future tense and if clause we use present tense not past tense based on that if you went to delhi is not correct it should be if you go to delhi you will meet the minister and which conditional is this open conditional if she has attended the meeting she would have known the news what is the main clause over here would have known here you have a pattern would plus have plus verb past participle form this goes with past conditional and what is a pattern past conditional if clause we use past perfect tense and main clause we use would plus have plus verb past participle form no error here main clause is no problem uh, here but if she has attended the meeting if clause is a problem it is in present perfect not correct it has to be in past perfect based on that what is the correct sentence if she had attended the meeting she would have known the news strategy number six if you see to be the primary auxiliary to be plus verb think of passive voice either present tense or past tense look at this english is teach by him every day there should be space as an ad, as an adverb english is teach by him every day here how do you spot the error you have the primary auxiliary to be in present and the verb also either present or basic form without to bear infinitive but remember any sentence in passive voice i repeat any sentence in passive voice the main verb should always be in past participle form based on that english is taught by him every day and what is it in active voice he teaches english every day english is taught by him every day students were informed by the master yesterday here were primary auxiliary to be in the past verb either present or bare infinitive but i have just said any sentence in passive voice the main verb should always be in past participle form based on that students were informed by the master yesterday the master informed the students yesterday active voice the student students were informed by the master yesterday strategy number 7 if you see being the moment you spot the word being you can save a few seconds plus verb think of passive voice present continuous past continuous future continuous the word being goes with continuous tenses in passive voice look at the example the papers are being correct by the team at the moment here being again the verb should be in past participle form the papers are being corrected by the team at the moment it is correct the office was being painting by them when i went there here being that means it should be in past continuous based on the context but here the verb is not in past participle that is the error the office was being painted by them when i went there strategy 8 if you see been plus verb 
think of passive voice perfect tenses present perfect past perfect future perfect the work has been assigned by the manager here has been after that there is a verb it should be in past participle form assign is not correct assigned the work has been assigned by the manager what is it in active voice the manager has assigned the work the work has been assigned by the manager the project will have been complementing by 2025 completing i'm sorry the project will have been completing by 2025 not correct the project will have been completed by 2025 what is it in active voice they will have completed the project by 2025 passive voice the project will have been completed by 2025 strategy number 9 if this is also very important you can save a few seconds when you read a sentence if you see words like said asked told ordered requested think of narration indirect speech look at the example he said that he is writing a letter then there is a reporting verb said in past then you have to become alert the moment you see the word said you should think of indirect speech he said it is in past here the tenses change to a corresponding past tense he must have said i am writing a letter now that is present continuous how does it change he said that he was writing a letter now changes to then present continuous changes to past continuous based on that he said that he was writing a letter then she asked the moment you see the word asked you have to think of indirect speech questions said goes with statements asked goes with questions and ordered told they go with commands requested goes with requests she asked me what was i doing this has been given many a time an important rule it goes with common errors here when many candidates or learners when they change a question from active or direct speech to indirect speech they try to keep it in interrogative form but there is one important rule when you change a question i repeat when you change a question from direct speech to indirect speech the interrogative form changes to affirmative form what was i doing interrogative not correct we have to say what i was doing i was doing affirmative she asked me what i was doing then it is correct this has been given many a time more examples if you see again said asked told ordered requested think of narration he told me to bring the new book here the moment you see told you have to think of command he told me to bring nothing wrong here he ordered me also you can say he told me to bring the new book here he must have said bring the new book here but here changes to there where is the error he told me to bring the new book there she requested the stranger show the way here the pattern we have to use a verb in the basic form or infinitive form with to here to is missing that is the error she requested the stranger to show the way to show the way strategy number 10 focus on subject verb agreement this is a separate topic altogether but one of the strategies always keep in mind or remember keep in mind or remember subject verb agreement very important and error location questions out of five usually you can expect at least one question based on subject verb agreement the latest issue of the magazine haven't been released here what is the subject issue it's a noun phrase but issue is a keyword of the magazine another phrase don't consider the latest issue issue is singular then you cannot use a plural verb has not been released 
the latest issue has not been released subject verb agreement the phenomena that has been discovered is quite astonishing this is a bit difficult first you have to know nouns of latin and greek origin they don't take the regular they don't follow the regular pattern of taking s or es some of the examples phenomenon criterion memorandum alumnus here phenomena is a plural form that you have to know at the outset phenomenon singular how do you decide whether you have to use a plural noun or the singular noun has been discovered singular verb is quite astonishing singular verb when you have two verbs in the singular form the subject has to be singular form obviously phenomena is a plural form here we have to use phenomenon phenomenon singular phenomena plural so the phenomenon that has been discovered is quite astonishing strategy number 11 focus on phrases when i say phrases standard phrases again you may ask sir how do we know the standard phrases when you read the newspaper every day the editorials you get exposed to standard phrases in the exam usually they touch the same phrases they give the same phrases she is one of those students who is interested in the subject this is a standard phrase one of the or one of those students a lot of candidates this example they have given many a time the pattern based on the rule she singular is singular is singular nothing wrong with the sentence but the sentence is not correct here we have those students and after that there is a clause this clause is related to those students those students plural then we cannot use a singular verb we have to use a plural verb she is one of those students who are interested in the subject very important the number of delegates have come down here there is a standard phrase what is it the number one more phrase of delegates don't consider the subject is the number a standard phrase and it takes a singular verb based on that the number have is not correct the number has come down that is correct strategy number 12 look for parallel expression bank exam sometimes ssc also they ask questions based on parallel expression or parallel construction or parallelism what up what does what does it mean parallel expression the grammatical unit should be the same in the sentence when you look at the example you understand intelligence diligence and being honest are important for success here we have intelligence diligence and being honest are important for success here intelligence is a noun diligence is also a noun but here being honest honest person adjective we cannot use a different grammatical unit all the three should be in the same form same part of speech and what is a noun form of this intelligence diligence and honesty are important for success this is what precisely we call parallel expression honesty is a noun form we have to use a noun form honest is not correct she likes skiing mountaineering and to trek here we have the verb ing form used as a noun that is gerund noun noun but here we have the verb in the basic form with to not correct it should be in the same form based on that she likes skiing mountaineering and trekking then it is correct this is what again precisely we call parallel expression strategy number 13 look for redundant expressions again quite often they ask questions based on redundancy or superfluous expressions look at the examples you understand he returned back from delhi yesterday here return means to come back then we don't have to use the word back that is unnecessary redundant expression he returned back from delhi not correct it's a common error he returned from delhi yesterday 
the student requested the master to repeat again. Repeat means to say something again. Then after repeat, we should not use the word again. The student requested the master to repeat. That's enough. This is also an important example. These two examples have given many a time. Strategy number 14, look for common errors. When it comes to, again, grammar, we have, they ask questions based on rules. They ask questions based on common errors. You have to know common errors. And the third dimension, the most important, uh, based on contextual awareness, contextual awareness. But the major chunk, you can expect rules based on questions based on uh, rules. Besides common errors, contextual awareness. This strategy, look for common errors. My sister and myself visited the exhibition yesterday. Common error here, myself can be an emphatic pronoun or a reflexive pronoun. We don't have to use. Here we have to use a personal pronoun in the subject form. Then what is the correct sentence? My sister and I visited the exhibition yesterday. People say, my sister and myself, not correct. A common error. One of the student is writing the notes very carefully. Another common error that goes with the phrase one of the. Here we are supposed to use a noun in the plural form. But a lot of people use a noun in the singular form. Why we don't know. One of the students, plural noun, singular verb. One of the students is writing the notes very carefully. These, one more example, he is my cousin brother. She is my cousin's sister, not correct. After the word cousin, you should not use brother or sister. Strategy number 15. If you see models helping verbs, think of bare infinitive. This has been given many a time. The new employee should went through the HR policy. Here we have a helping verb or a model should. And after that, there's a verb. This verb should be in the basic form without two. For that, there's, a, there's an expression. What is it? Bare infinitive. And here, what is a bare infinitive? Go. The new employee should go through the HR policy. She can. Here, there's a helping verb or model can. After that, there's a verb. And this verb should be in bare infinitive. What is it? I would like to tell you guys here, these are not present forms. These are the basic form, each one basic form without two. And we call that bare infinitive. I would like to tell in this context, if you take any verb, any verb has five forms like your five fingers. The first one, basic form or infinitive. The second one, present form. Third one, past form. And the fourth, past participle. The fifth, verb plus ing, present participle. Here, two in brackets. Based on some rules you have to use. Based on some rules you should not use. And this is the one we are talking about here. This is known as the basic form or infinitive. What is the rule here? If you have to use a verb after a model or helping verb, that verb should be in the basic form without two. Basic form without two, we call bare infinitive. And here, it is not the present form. It is a basic form without two. That you have to remember. Otherwise, you get the doubt, why should we use a present form? It is not the present form. It is a basic form without two. And we call that bare infinitive. Strategy number 16, focus on articles. And uh, after going through all these, if you don't find the error, think of articles. She got emotionally attached to an European city. Here, you have European city. It begins with a vowel letter, but it has a consonantal sound, U, ya sound. That is a consonantal sound. Because it begins with a consonantal sound, you cannot use an, you have to say, a European city. I met a MP on my way to the capital city. Here, MP, what is the first letter? 
a consonantal letter but it has a vowel sound m vowel sound because it has a vowel sound we cannot say a mp we have to say an mp then it is correct she is the bravest and the wisest student here we have two adjectives in the superlative form and this is an important rule it also goes with articles when we use two nouns or two adjectives that refer to the same person before the second noun or before the second adjective we should not use any article based on that she is the bravest and wisest student before the second one we should not use any article that's an important rule strategy number 17 focus on pronouns the two employees argued bitterly with one another what is a pronoun here reciprocal pronoun one another but the sentence talks about two employees then we cannot use one another we have to use each other one should always remember what he has to do here the subject is the indefinite pronoun one this is a common error they have given in many exams very important when we see one as a subject we cannot use a personal pronoun we cannot use a possessive pronoun they usually a lot of people they use here there is a personal pronoun based on the sentence they may use a possessive pronoun not correct we have to use one possessive form once but here one one should always remember what one has to do a lot of people say one should always remember what he has to do not correct one should always remember what one has to do one more example one should not forget his duty his is a possessive pronoun not correct one should not forget one's duty then it is correct an important rule strategy number 18 if you see nouns you have to become alert certain nouns not all the nouns the gentry the moment you see the word gentry you have to become alert there is one rule that goes with number nouns what is that rule some nouns always have the singular form but take a plural verb and uh, i usually give five examples cattle poultry gentry vermin clergy here gentry singular no error but it takes a plural verb the gentry have accepted the measles again certain diseases measles mumps rickets we have to use this also goes with the nouns rule what is that rule some nouns are always in the plural form but take a singular verb the measles based on that is a deadly disease though it is in the plural form it takes a singular verb she forgot to bring her spectacle yesterday one more rule that goes with nouns some nouns are always in the plural form they take a plural verb here she forgot to bring one of the examples spectacle is not correct always plural form then you have to say spectacles trousers shorts tights spectacles pajamas binoculars all these always in the plural form strategy number 19 if you see verbs certain verbs you should become alert the master made there are two verbs important from the exam point of view help and make they come under causative verbs in active voice they don't take the preposition to the master made the students to wait so where is the error the master made the students wait for an hour Two should not be used. They fell many trees in the colony yesterday. Here it is in past. The verb, it is in past. You may think that way. So you may think no error. But here we are not talking about fall, fell, fallen. We are talking about another verb. What is it? Fell, felled, felled. Means what? To cut down trees. So here it is in, it has to be in past. Fell is not past. What is the past form of that? Felled. They felled many trees in the colony yesterday. The local government hung the notorious terrorist yesterday. Again, if you take the verb hang, it has two forms, the regular form, the irregular form. Regular form goes with persons. 
irregular form goes with things. But here we are talking about a person, then we cannot use an irregular form. What is a regular form? Hanged. Based on that, the local government hanged the notorious terrorist yesterday. If you see adjectives and adverbs, quite often they ask questions based on word forms. They use an adjective in place of an adverb or an adverb in place of an adjective. You got to be a little careful. And also you have to think of the specific rules. The rich is usually arrogant. Here we have the word rich. Actually, the word rich is an adjective. But in English, we can use adjectives as nouns. Here, the rich, here the word rich is a noun. When we use an adjective as a noun, two things we have to remember. We have to use a definite article, the, and we should use a verb in the plural form. The rich are usually arrogant. Then it is correct. The new student thinks that he is superior than my friend. This goes with comparative adjectives, very important. Compared to adjectives like anterior, posterior, superior, inferior, senior, junior, elder, prior, preferable, and the verb prefer, they all take the preposition to. Common error, people use than, not correct. Based on that, superior to my friend, not than. The climate of Bombay is better than Bangalore. Here you're comparing climate of Bombay, and this goes with uh, degrees of comparison. The climate of Bombay is better than Bangalore, not correct. We have to say, the climate of Bombay is better than that of Bangalore, then it is correct. That's all about 20 strategies, time-saving strategies. And if you use these strategies, I'm sure you will be able to save a few seconds. And do remember, every second matters. Try to use these tips and strategies. Thank you very much. All the best.